guys, welcome back to another episode of Real World Angling. I am your host, Aaron Jeffrey. Uh, it's just after the rockfish opener here, um, April 6th, I believe. <coughs> we are headed out right now out of Newport Harbor, guys. Uh, I just put the boat in the water. We're running through Back Bay right now. Um, uh, the goal for today, guys, is to go out and fish everything from 900 to 1500. I'll probably focus on around 900 to 1200. Um, but I brought mainly electrics. I did bring a, a Saltiga 20 and a Saltiga 35 to fish the shallower three or 400 foot stuff. No need for the electrics in that. Plus, it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. But it was a full moon last night, so it is absolutely flat, calm, beautiful, as you guys can see. Could not ask for a better view. Uh, as I went over <coughs> in my last video, guys, two hooks, no more than two hooks when fishing rockfish or any other of the federally managed ground fish uh, in the Southern Management Area and all of California for that one. Um, sand dabs, you may fish unlimited hooks. That's one of the few exceptions to that rule. We're about 10 minutes from getting out of the harbor here, guys. A uh, couple important safety tips. One, I always wear my Onyx. This is an AM24. Um, anytime I'm running above idle, pretty much, anytime I'm running above about five miles an hour planing speed, uh, if I'm up on plane especially, I always have this on. Um, whether I'm by myself, whether I'm you know, with a partner in a tournament, um, I didn't have it on in my swordfish video fighting the fish, which was definitely a mistake on my part, but I try to keep it on all the time. And then also, anytime I'm also up on plane, uh, very important, I have my kill switch attached. There is a loop right here for my kill switch. So if I ever happen to lose consciousness, if I faint, if I fall over, I get hit by a road wave, that pulls, the motor stops, at least the boat's not running around, I'm not on qualified captain standing there with my boat going in circles. So very important to uh, always be safe. I also let my fiance know where I'm going for the day. Just a general game plan of where I'm gonna be and around what time I'm gonna be back. Uh, it's called a float plan, it's always good to have. I text her in the morning before, uh, before I get in the water to give her an idea just so if she doesn't see me. It's always safety first, guys. So we are almost out of the harbor here. We're just passing Davy's locker. Um, the Western Pride should be out today. They've been absolutely roping them. So I will talk to him and see what's been going on. And stay tuned for some action, guys. All right guys, so I went ahead and I reset here. Um, I came up a little shallower, I'm on uh, just about 700 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and fish the 500. Um, I'm fishing 20 or 24 ounces of weight right now. Um, this marked up real good. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot and then slope out and fish this a little bit deeper and kind of see what happens. I just need to make sure that they're the right kind of biters. Not drifting very fast, which is great. All right, guys. Both that we should be able to see what we got here any second. Coming up on color. Oh, we got a double, guys. Oh, they're giants. Oh, look at that, guys. <laughs> look at that. We got a big old chili and a giant Mexican.
This here for you guys that don't know is a chili pepper. These are very good eating, crazy. Came up from 600 plus feet with pretty much no bear trauma whatsoever. That's our top hook and on our bottom hook. Oh, look at this thing. That is a giant Mexican rockfish. Darker, darker red, no blotch. As you guys can see this line right here. Very indicative uh, with the new uh, open depths. A lot more of these, catching a lot more of these things. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go back up on that drift. So yeah, like I was saying guys, um, I switched it up here a little bit, dropped down to like size 3 owner Mewtwo's. Um, just a little bit smaller hook, 80 pound fluoro. So I still want something stiff to keep it from wanting to tangle up, but uh, you know, I, I think there might've been something with those bigger like chicken rigs that I ordered, that 300 pound mono. Um, on the real deep stuff, it might not matter, but obviously on this stuff, it's played a little bit of a role, I'm sure, because uh, I got bit pretty much instantly. Um, so, bottom's working up real good again, and I'm sure we should get bit probably pretty much as soon as we get to the bottom. So, I'm gonna go ahead and check my drag real quick. I want it to be able to set a hook, but if I hook a big cow or a couple of huge reds or something, we don't want it to strip out. Or we don't want it to bust off, so let's get down to the bottom here. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, great marks, great marks, great marks. We are 200 meters. Oh man, that is Man. That was good or what? Whew. I'll uh, show you guys a screenshot of the meter. You guys can see what I'm looking at. We are down. And yeah, let's see how fast. Oh, it's an instant bite, guys. Jeez. That was about as instant as it gets, guys. <laughs> Hit the bottom and pull the rod out of my hand. Oh! Oh man. Oh, there's one. There's a good one too. Ooh. Oh, there's one, guys. Oh, yeah, that might be two. Oh, it's a single, and it looks like it's a big red. No, what do we got? Oh, another big giant Mexican. Oh, oh look at that thing. Look at that big old Mexican. <laughs> oh, and the meter's red it out. Let's just get it right back down. I don't even care. There you go. Let's get it right back down as fast as I can because the meter is absolutely jugged. A decent Mexican guys, not a gigantic one, but a good one. You guys, like I said, you can see the dark, this dark kind of brown, this real red, this big old solid lateral line. Have some really cheap, like worth split rings on the boat. You don't need them like high pressure or anything like that, guys. Uh, you guys can see I boom. Now I've created myself 12 ounces of weight. So I did get picked clean, not too surprised. So we'll go ahead and get lined back up on this. There's not much drift. It looks like it's slowed down a little bit, which is good. But I did drift a couple hundred feet, so. All right, we got another drop down. We're gonna, uh, we'll see how this one pans out. A little bit more weight, should be down any second. Looks like everything's marking up pretty good. Maybe not quite as thick as it was before, but we'll figure that part out here in a second. See whether they bite or not. We're down. Oh, and yeah, they're biting. <laughs> they're biting. Again, I'm trying to go for something a little bit better grade. Oh, there's a good grade. That felt like a bit a good fish. Oh yeah. That, 
That's definitely a decent fish. Of course, I just want two because I'm greedy. Oh, come on. Oh, one more. One more. Get too greedy that you end up losing your first one, so you got to be careful. I got picked on the first one, so we'll see. And that was the Patriot giving me a wonderful waking as they head off to Catalina, it looks like. Oh, it's actually might be a decent fish. Oh, we do have a double. It is some humongous green stripes. Wow, those are some giant green stripes. Ah, uh, that's a that is a really big green stripe rockfish. I'll go ahead and pop him and descend him. See you later, dude. He's out of here. He swam down pretty well, actually. And this one we will probably have to keep. Not that I want to, but pretty blown out. Oh, see you later. There goes the other one. Yep. All right, guys, we are sitting back out here. We are well over 600, close to 700. Uh, yeah, almost 700 feet. Um, stopped uh, just past this spot I want to fish is inside of us, probably 200 feet or so. Um, but it looks like I'm down and within it looks like we are bit instantly by better grade stuff oh there's one yep before i even got to the bottom guys this is the good stuff here this is definitely these bites guys oh, oh, oh there's the good stuff guys there there's the good stuff guys you see the head shakes that's what we're looking for that is what we're looking for right there that is the better quality right here 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, oh, is it a single? It's a single, which means it's got to be decent if it's a single. What do we got? We got a red? Might be a big red or a big Mexican. I can't tell yet. Oh, uh, let's see. What do we got? Oh, it's a nice, big Mexican rockfish. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It's not a double, this is a solid one. Oh, there's deep color over there. It's a single, guys. It is a single, 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 but it's a good one. Another giant Mexican. Oh, that's a giant Mexican. Oh, look at that thing, guys. Oh my god. Look at that thing. It's a huge one. Woohoo! Giant Mexican guys. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Look at that. Yep, yeah, yeah, we're down. Oh, and they're biting already. Oh, there's one. We're getting two on this one, guys. I'm gonna leave it down. I'm getting I want two. Oh, there's two. That's gotta be two. Oh, that's two. That's gotta be two. There we go. Oh, it's a single. Nope, nope. Nope, we got a double. We got a double, guys. Sorry about that. I thought we had a single. Double. We got a double with... Oh, just like our first double, guys. Awesome. We got a nice big chili pepper. Look how cool that thing is. What a beautiful looking fish. Like, what a streamlined, just white belly. Look how cool the eyes are. Oh, man. Big old chili pepper. And 
Another Mexican. <laughs> I love reds. I love coppers, but man, these Mexicans are awesome, guys. Oh, well, I'm gonna do a quick count uh, on my fish real quick here, guys. I wanna make sure that I'm not over limit, close to limit, anything like that. I wanna make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm abiding by the rules. So I'm gonna take a quick count and then uh, I'll probably set up. I think I have probably two more fish for a limit, so. All right, guys, let's cross our fingers. One more double, and we are done for the day. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hopefully there's still two. It feels like there's a lot of weight on here, so. Oh, there's color. There's color. Looks like a double. We got us a double. Oh, what a good one. Oh, guys, a double on giant. Oh, no, 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 he came off. Where's my gap? No, oh, come on. Oh, I can't believe he didn't float, guys. Oh, you guys see that? That is, oh, I can still see his white belly. He's trying to make it. We got one. That is a speck. Look at that thing. Big old giant one. That's what's clattered out on the bottom there. There he comes. Ah, here it comes. Here it comes. There we go. Perfect. Here is our day. We have a giant box full of black gill, full of chilies, full of Mexicans. It is a beautiful day. There is wonderful Catalina Island over there, if you can see it, it's beautiful. We're gonna put the hammer down. I'm gonna put the rods away, put the hammer down, head back to the harbor. We're gonna put this boat on the trailer. We're gonna hit the fillet table. I'm gonna show you how to fillet these rockfish. So what I'm gonna do first here, guys, um, I don't know how the shadows are working in the light. Got sun kind of above me, but um, I always like to start with my fish facing to the left. It's just a habit. Um, but I always put my hand underneath the gills here so I can grab it securely. Let me just cut following down the gills behind the gill plate here. And then a little slice right here on the anal fin. We go down here, we're going to turn the tip of our knife. I'm going to push on the fillet. I'm just going to push. If you're having to like saw, your knife is dull, you need to sharpen your knife. Um, a dull knife is way more dangerous than a sharp knife. But as you guys can see here, I'm just really just gently pushing, following along the spine of the fish. Boom, comes right off. That is an absolutely textbook perfect fillet. You may have a different way of doing it and that's perfectly fine. This is the way that I do it. This is the way that I like to do it and I will continue to do it. But if you have a different method that you prefer, by all means, do whatever works for you. This is personally just how I like to do it. Uh, it's a collapsible bucket from Amazon that I bought. I use this to keep my bigger parts in. And then what I'll do is at the very end, I'll take all those and uh, put them in a trash bag. So here is where we like, got our rib cage here. I'll trace that rib cage just around the rib cage. Push. And have a perfect fillet. Um, since we're at home, we can remove all the skin. We're gonna be going to the house here shortly, so not a big deal. If you were on the water though, you would not be able to do that. You would have to leave all of the skin on and actually, you know what I'll do guys? I'm going to show you guys what I do when I'm on the water. So this is what I do when I'm on the water. You have to leave all the skin attached, but I don't really want to deal with taking it all off at home. So I'll cut it to about there and leave on about a one inch patch. So the whole skin is still technically attached to the fish, 
they can lay it out and identify it, but then when you get home, you can just give it a pull and it comes right off. So that's personally how I like to do it. But beautiful black gill fillets, that is like my favorite thing to eat, so. But setting up a table like this, guys, I think I spent 50 or 60 bucks on it, but it's just a piece of starboard, which I countersunk the holes, use some small stainless screws, screwed it to some ply, use some furring strips around, but this keeps your water in, keeps your fillets in, but then you cut on it. And having the hose to wash it, I have it just at a slight angle. Same thing we'll do with our chilies here. So the chilies, I'm gonna do a little bit different. This is how I traditionally like to do them. I take my ribs off while the fish are still attached or why the fillets are still attached to the fish, uh, unless they are bigger fish. Um, I guess this is just a deckhand in me, former life, but again, make sure you guys have a sharp knife, super important. Like I said, a, uh, a dull knife is way more dangerous than a sharp knife because you're gonna be pushing and trying to saw your way through a fish. And that's not good. Red than the anchovy. But yeah, I have this at an angle, guys. You can see I can just smooth everything down. Keep myself a nice clean station. And then everything runs in between this gap and the furring strip. And I have this bucket here that has lots of holes so the water will drain, but it'll catch all the little particles of stuff, you know, that I don't want in my yard or in my driveway. And then I can just dump those back into a trash bag at the end. Big old speck. and see if we should do some fish tacos for dinner tonight. Not sure how she's feeling being pregnant and all, which I haven't told a whole lot of people yet, but family all knows, so I guess the YouTube community can know. Uh, you guys have seen some pictures or seen my daughter, Mackenzie, and my other daughter, Brooke, uh, which I talked about in my swordfish video, but I am expecting another one. Uh, towards the end of the year, so TBD on boy or girl, but I'm pretty excited. Add another fisherman to the family, so Lindsay will not be uh, fishing with me too much this season. I can't imagine, uh, you know. But we'll see uh, see what happens, and might have a little buddy, or might end up with a trio of girls. So we'll see. But I'm excited. So. Well, that is how you fillet rockfish, guys. It works for pretty much all rockfish bass. It's all the same procedure. Um, again, make sure you sharpen your knife. I use Dexter Russells and Forsters. Um, those are about the only two knives I've ever used. Bubble blades are great. I know a lot of guys use those. Um, have yourself a stone, very important. Uh, I use a 400-600 combo stone. For all my filleting I have for years, they're relatively cheap on Amazon. Um, but yeah, cord wrapped, get a good grip on it. Buy some gloves. Um, buy unisize, unisex, unihand uh, gloves, but ones that aren't left hand, right hand, because you normally buy a pair and you end up never using the right hand because it's uncomfortable and you only use the left hand. So buy one that you can switch on either hand. But I'm going to uh, finish Cleaning up these last uh, couple of rockfish here. Got a little piece of skin there. Oh, perfect, look at that. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these Mexicans, guys. Glad you guys joined me on this adventure. We had really good rock fishing. Um, fishing deep, fishing local, but really fun, really fun episode to make. Uh, great first trip of the season. I'm gonna try and get out again tomorrow. Don't know if I'll make a video or not of that one, but. I uh, got to do some pre-fishing for an upcoming saltwater bass tournament. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Please like, subscribe, help out the channel. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, of course, except for a click of your mouse. Uh, if you guys have anything specific you guys want to see, go ahead and just shoot me an email or drop it in a comment below, and I'd love to have some more ideas for a video. Um, but yeah, guys, local rockfish, nice grade, 
great fish tacos. So go out, get you some.